Hello and welcome to uh, another session in the studio here at Emirates Old Trafford. I'm delighted to say I've got Glenn Chappell alongside me. And we'll just be looking back at uh, 2022 and forward to 2023. So Glenn, 2022, um, it, it, we're in December now, coming up to Christmas. But, um, you know, three second places. If you look at it at the start of the season, you'd say that's a really good season. And I think you'd probably say that at the end, but there's the frustration of not actually getting across the line in one of those competitions. Yeah, the way I look at it now is to say to finish second in all three competitions, you have to play well. Yeah, To be in the best two in all three competitions, you have to play good cricket. So that's what we have to look at. Did we play good cricket? Did we commit to everything all year? And we absolutely did but being so close to winning makes it disappointing at the same time mm. and all you can do with that really is to say that it'll our players will be frustrated with that they'll be energy energized by it next year they'll have the belief that they're in the top two or three teams in the country right now and we'll work hard and we'll make sure we keep getting better and better so so our outlook is bright for next year does the belief that being up there and challenging in red ball, white ball cricket, in all its forms, does that lead, you think, to a confidence within the squad that they can go one step further? Absolutely. I think one of those points, is, it, for me, is quite important, that the number of players we lost in the blast to the 100 and our really young team came second in the RL50 mm. And if we're honest, we probably should have won that game if we'd have played as well as we had in the majority of the group games. Then that should instil belief across the squad that we've got players who can come in when the big-name players leave for England or for the franchise mm. stuff, that we can stay competitive and win games of cricket. You've got a continual and continuous challenge because of the quality of player that we've got here at Lancashire. They're always going to be pulled out of the county setup and taken into the England setup. That's not going to go away. So how do you mitigate against that? Well, you can't perfectly, can you? Because you can't just lose loads of players and then guarantee to be as good. Because that would require having players of equal calibre playing in the second team. They're not going to be happy with that. So you need a supply line of young players coming through who are of that quality to step up. So if you can get the younger players who haven't quite earned the right yet to be in your first team, but you know deep down that they're nearly as good and will be as good with the experience, that's how you can have a chance to do it. Mm. Because you can't, you can't have a squad full of players who are disenchanted and disillusioned by having no, no chance when they know they'd be in any other team in the country. So you've got to keep doing that. And what this, what this schedule does is it, it allows you to have a squad of really good players, but also creates opportunity for your good younger players coming through. And that's really the only way I can see you achieving long-term quality, because we can't have players not given the opportunity when they deserve it. The uh, Winter plans are well underway now, and, and everybody's thinking towards 2023. It'll be here um, before we know it. When you're missing a number of players, and a lot of players are away on England duty or Lions duty or, or whatever it is, does that, um, does that hinder or help the lads that are left back here uh, looking towards progressing to next season? The positive thing for it is they get a lot of time with coaches to work on certain aspects of the game. So if they're younger players who have certain skills that they want to improve, then they get that time to, to do that. It's a real challenge for a squad because we're, a lot of the work that we do, we'd like to do together. So we'd like to spend time talking about looking back on last season, certain games together, maybe reviewing a few things, planning for the future. But for the lads who are away, it's a positive because they want to play cricket and they want variety. They don't want to be stuck in an indoor centre for four months when you don't have to be. But the challenges are, how do we do the best for our players who are here? Mm. And the, most of the time, now we're free to travel, most of the time they've chosen to be here because they've got specifics to work on and that's what they'll be focusing on. But at the same time, we've got other young players who've decided to go away and play club cricket elsewhere. 
um, and develop the game playing, playing competitively. Taking some young players on from the academy um, for, for next summer. We've got a new intake of academy players. So they will be very much a part of Lancashire cricket uh, going forward. Yeah, and a lot of the coaches work in the winter is spent working with the academy. And if we can find ways to integrate some of the pros with the academy at the right time, that'll be really good for the younger players and it'll put more people in the groom to create a, a bit more of an atmosphere. So, yeah, I mean, this is a really, a really good phase for, for the younger players to work. So you sit down after Christmas and you'll have a, a plan of action building up to pre-season and the season. But that plan must include, well, virtually every player on the staff and the academy as well, because you never know who's going to be available at any one time. We'll have a look at, um, we've already drawn up where all the players are who've got other engagements throughout the winter. And we'll work out when they're back with us, what they're likely to need, what they can help with, and try and dovetail that as well as we can. Um, we'll sit down with the players before Christmas and maybe talk through the training phases because in January there's, you know, you've got to be really clear on what you're working on, why you're doing it, and the timeline's quite important for that. So you've plenty of time in January. You don't want to be at high performance level in the indoor centre in January. You want to be getting there middle of March. So obviously we'll open it up to the players as well for mm. their input. They need to start challenging the coaches on why am I doing this, this is what I want to do, we'll talk it through. The key for the winter really, when they're at home, is to stay fresh and be ready for the season, mm. not to burn out in February, because they're so keen on getting better. Mm. There's an element where, oh, I've done too much too soon. Mm. So that's one of the areas. And from Glen Chapel's point of view, how do you stay fresh? You've just been to the T10 in Abu Dhabi, that must have been an interesting experience. Was it, yeah. <laughs> Um, it's a bit harem scarum, is that? Yeah, isn't it? ten over cricket. Well, um, I really enjoyed it. There's some high quality players there. Um, it's a it's a good fun tournament, but it's serious at the same time. But there's elements of tactics that are gonna they're gonna spread into T20 cricket and into the rest of the game. People finding new levels of risk that are appropriate. Um, there's still all the same tactics involved. I mean, execution of your skill as a bowler becomes key and you're doing that under pressure with a crowd in being on TV against some of the better players in the world so the development that that can that sort of cricket can provide for a player I think is invaluable in those areas you just have to adopt the philosophy that we could lose this game because mm. it can all hinge on one ball which could go anywhere uh, we now know the schedule and the fixtures for, for 2023 um, it's quite obvious without me stating it that that you want to go one better in more than one competition? Yes, but we <laughs> have to get there first. Mm -hmm. So I think the idea is to work hard and smart to be as good as we can at the start of the season and take it match by match. I'm absolutely fine with having an overriding goal and the players will be involved in setting what that is. And I'm fairly sure I know what that will be. But you've got to do a lot of work and a lot of good play a lot of good cricket before you get into that position. Glenn, thank you very much. Plenty of hard work ahead and best of luck for 2023. Thank you.